Hey everyone, Lexi Wire here. Welcome to Beers with Your Lender. I'm here with Troy Williamson, the mortgage guru. He's our lender that we use all the time. He's awesome. And today we wanted to talk to you about renting versus buying. So as some of you may have noticed, the rental market is crazy lately. We've been getting a lot of comments, a lot of feedback on the rental market lately, which is great. We love the comments. Keep them coming. Um, but we have had some people kind of running into some issues here trying to find a rental because it is so competitive and it's really kind of hard to know that um, if you are thinking about relocating from somewhere else and you're not here seeing the local market, it's um, kind of hard to, to know that. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I had a client come into town last week with dogs and we had a very hard time trying to find him a rental. We were looking for a single family home and the inventory is pretty low right now. So um, if you do have animals um, and that's what you're looking for, you might have kind of a hard time finding a rental here. So you may actually be surprised that you might qualify for um, a home instead of a rental. So that's what we're going to be talking to Troy about today. Definitely. I think with the uh, with the issues with, you know, uh, trying to find a rental right now, and it, it was compounded uh, when Hurricane Florence came through in September of last year because you took an inventory issue for rentals. It was already pretty bad. You amplified it by taking houses off the market as a result of the storm. Plus, you had an influx of people that were displaced from damaged rentals that needed to find new rental places to live. And we think what's happened, or we're pretty sure we know what's happened over the course of the last several months is, you know, you, people take advantage of, unfortunately, situations, and as you lower well supply and demand, you have an influx of or higher demand with limited supply, and that drives prices up as a result. And uh, now, more than ever, you know, for the last several years, you hear, hear people say, like, oh, you know, you can buy for less or the same as what you can rent, and in a lot of cases, that's true, but I think now, more than ever, we're finding that to be you know, the case in, in a lot of cases, in most cases across the board, just because rental prices have gone up so much. Fortunately, interest rates on mortgages have come down this year compared to last year. So even though uh, prices on homes have continued to go up because of the dropping of the interest rates, it's kept the, the monthly payments in check as the rents have continued to go up. So we're definitely uh, seeing in a lot of instances where people are getting into homes and their monthly payments are actually going down from what they were renting before. So it's, uh, you know, and, and also kind of to touch on what we touched, uh, talked about last time, uh, you know, you, you don't have to have this massive amount of money to purchase a home nowadays. You can get away with, in often cases, no money out of pocket or minimal money, amount of money out of pocket for programs like USDA or VA if you're a veteran. But even if not, um, there's down payment assistance programs as well and minimal down payment programs such as the Fannie Mae Home Ready Program, which only requires 3% uh, down payment. So there's definitely some some good viable options out there for financing, and, and not only that too, but you know if you're buying something, it's yours. If you have pets, you don't have to worry about paying a pet deposit or finding a, a place that's pet friendly that's going to allow you to have your pets there. So it just takes some of the stress out of finding some place uh, you know to call home. Right, and some so going back to the pets issue, um, some of the challenges we've seen lately is not only are there breed restrictions, but a lot of the time you can only have one pet, and there is a weight restriction as well. So, um, you know, a lot of times we're seeing 20 pounds and under or 40 pounds and under, and, I mean, that's not a very big dog. A lot of people have dogs bigger than that. So um, it's it's been a little bit challenging as far as that goes. Um, something else that we've seen is um, credit issues and um, just the requirements in general um, to be able to rent a house compared to being able to buy. I mean, you might be looking at similar qualifications, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, so. it is. I mean, I know what you were telling me the other day about things that, that people were being asked for that you'd help find rentals. And I mean, it, it sounds like a lot of the same stuff and some of the requirements were crazy even above and beyond what it would take to qualify for a home loan today. So I definitely you know, think that in addition to the prices going up, as well as the requirements being crazy and the restrictions on pets and things like that, I mean, it's, it's just it's kind of, um, it's, it's getting nuts. It definitely is getting kind of crazy out there. So. Yeah, it really is. So something that I keep hearing lately is, do I have to be transferring uh, my job? Do I have to transfer within the same company to get a home loan? And 
well, I guess I'll let you take yeah. it from here. No, I mean, if you're if you're moving here, even if you're not transferring with your current employer and you're getting a new job, as long as you have a job lined up and you're going to be a full-time salary or hourly employee, W-2, not any kind of independent contractor or self-employed, but moving here and being a full-time employee of a company, even if it's not the same line of work that you've been working in, you know, most of the time we can use that income for qualifying. Um, a lot of times, even if you haven't started yet, but if you've got a non-contingent offer letter or employment contract from the employer that you're going to be working with, we, we can use that as future income as long as you're going to start that job within 60 days of the time that you close. So there are some creative things out there that are well within guidelines for mortgages that, that will, could allow you to qualify and not, you know, you don't have to wait until you start your job and are there for 30 days worth of pay stuff before you can close on home or something like that. So, uh, you know, not, not all lenders will allow stuff like that, but, you know, most will that follow agency guidelines for Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and, and government loans as well. So uh, there are options out there where, you know, where you might feel like, hey, I'm not going to be able to qualify for a home. But uh, in, in a lot of cases, you very well may. You definitely might be surprised. We've had a couple um, clients lately that have given Troy a call, and they've been very surprised to hear that they actually do qualify. And um, like Troy was saying earlier, the prices have gone up a little bit. So, I mean, you could potentially be paying the same price for your rental as you could for, you know, the mortgage on your home that you own. So. Definitely. So we appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to pass along some information to you guys today. And, and as always, if you've got any questions or you want additional information, feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to help. That's right. So if you are interested in um, just taking a look and seeing what you qualify for, go ahead and give Troy a call. So he can usually tell you in about 30 minutes what you qualify for, whether or not, you know, we can move forward or not. So it's good to know where you stand. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks so much, Troy. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate Cheers it. Cheers to another. Here with your lender. Thanks, you guys.